It is Tuesday night. It is eight o'clock. Do you know where DJ is at? I know where I'm at. I'm here with you. And yes, it's Buddy with the DJ Roundtable. And I'm surrounded by a few great DJs here, as always. And always, we have people from different parts of the country representing different parts in, in the this great, beautiful country of ours. And I'm getting alerts for a lot of things going on tonight. Uh, we have a lot of a little bit of news to go through and little things to digest and maybe look into some things and see where that goes. Uh, first thing first, I want to thank you all for coming in, as well as thank you for watching out there on YouTube or on Instagram or on Facebook or anything like that. You've seen the show. And we are coming very quickly on our one-year anniversary here on Twitch and on YouTube. And I want to thank you all for the support and thank you all for watching. And make sure you smash that like button. Make sure you smash that thumbs up. Make sure you smash the follow button. And go to these other guys' social media. Follow them. They have YouTube channels. So go to the tube of the U. Go follow them. Make sure you follow and watch your gig logs. Uh, we got some really great people here. So make sure you go out there and watch them. Uh, I, I can't thank them enough for supporting the show and being here and answering the questions every week. And, well, we all had took off uh, 4th of July. So if you didn't see an episode on the 4th or for, for a little bit, that's because we took it off. But I want to let you guys all know that, you know, we're back on normal schedule for till the holidays at, for the end of the year. But we do have our one-year anniversary, which, again, I want to thank you guys all for our one-year anniversary uh, that will be coming up on the 16th. So we're a, bit, a little bit ahead of that. But the 16th is our one-year anniversary. Come up here on Twitch and YouTube. And um, again, we've been through a lot of people and done a lot of stuff. So as uh, far as a lot of DJs being on here, we have some great interviews. Uh, we have some great DJs who have been on here. And as always, we can't do without you. So please make sure you follow, like, and subscribe. With that said, if you guys are around today on Tuesday, uh, July 11th, 2023, and again, if you're watching this in August, September, October, November, you're way in the future. <laughs> you're watching this in 2029. You're way in the future. You know way more than we know as of right now. But as of right now, as of today, came out <laughs> Alpha Theta which is owns Pioneer, which is Pioneer uh, USA. Hey, what's going on? Uh, which is Pioneer USA uh, acquired, acquired Serato. And the thing with that is that there's many questions with that. We have no answers. There's nothing out there. There's a lot of speculation, you know, it, you know, people are asking, is there milk spoiled now? Can they still go outside? Is it, is the world ending? All these other questions. There, there's no answers for that kind of stuff. The answers we have is the same answers I have right now that Pioneer acquired Serato. I am sure that the people at Pioneer, they did it for strategic reasons to make sure they have a great product. Uh, I know they have Record Box, and we have a Record Box DJ here who is very happy with it. And I'm sure there's going to be down the road integration between the two of them and you know, he probably go on to whoever the new one is and go from there. So again, we're looking into the future. We don't have crystal balls. We're we're don't have the foggiest. We're not, you know, in the pipeline. We don't know nothing going on. We know as much as you guys do out there. But we're going to talk about it a little bit how we feel as DJs and as myself as a DJ. Um, I think it's kind of cool that I'm a Pioneer fan. I'm I have Pioneer equipment. Um, I'm a virtual DJ DJ, so I don't use Serato nor Rekordbox, uh, so I have no form whatsoever with that. But the thing is that the question I have as a virtual DJ is that are they going to still allow virtual DJ to map their units down the road, or they're going to keep it exclusively Serato just for Pioneer? So if you're a Denon older owner, if you're a Rain owner, if you're you know a Hercules owner, Whatever brand of equipment you you use, will Serato in the future work with that? Who knows? We don't know. Again, I don't want to speculate. It's questions. And again, eventually we'll know. I'm sure 
I, I probably would think, me personally, that they would still want that market and still support those DJs to use Serato. And it would be, um, again, beneficial for them financially. But again, I, I, I have no idea. So I want to go to my fellow virtual DJ DJ here, Jeff Johnson. And he is in beautiful uh, Carolinas. He's in North Carolina there and uh, enjoying himself. Uh, not uh, 100 miles from the beach, right? You got to drive like an hour. 200. 200? Okay. So you got to drive a couple hours, a few hours to get to the beach. But you haven't do it can enjoy nice summer weather all year, basically. Oh, you get a little snow, you said. Um but the thing is, you do enjoy nice weather down there. I'm sure it's nice, warm, and hot down there, and you're out there doing gigs. What do you think about this move that uh, Pioneer purchasing uh, Serato? What do you think of that? I don't know what to think of it. It's uh, it just hit me, you know, today. Um, Hundred million dollar deal, you know, it's huge. Um, obviously, the um, the owners. Uh, the, the New Zealand company that owns Serato saw ad, an advantage to sell it for that price. Um, you know, I, I tend to think of all of these mergers and acquisitions, um, it, it's coming everywhere. Uh, I, I'm not surprised. Uh, it's happening uh, daily in a lot of uh, a lot of aspects of life and business. Um, yeah, the, the question is, um, will, like you just uh, asked, you know, will this software still be compatible? Uh, will they be able to, you know, move this on other units? Uh, so, yeah, I, I got a feeling that even though they're going to be a bigger company uh, with a lot more behind them, I think they're going to still keep it separate, at least for the for the near future. Uh, it, it It's... To, it's advantageous to them to keep selling separately uh, Pioneer products and Serato products. And, and you know, I mean, it, it just makes sense. Um, but, you know, it, it was kind of some people will probably be saying tomorrow. I, I saw the writing on the wall years ago when they started putting Serato on all their Pioneer products. You know, they, you know, it, it is the, um, the software used by most DJs. And, uh, you know, it, it is what it is. So I, I don't see a big deal with it. I don't think it's going to affect a lot of us in the industry just as, you know, regular users. Even though I personally don't use Serato, I've got it. I, I've played with it. Uh, for me personally, I use Virtual DJ for the video mixing. If I weren't, uh, if I weren't playing videos, I would probably use Serato. So, uh, but yeah, yeah. I, I, I don't think it's going to be that big of a deal in the, in the uh, short term. Hopefully not in the long term. Well, and Jeff, I'm sure you've been through, you work in the corporate world. I've worked in the corporate world. Uh, acquisitions and mergers happen uh, quite a bit. And uh, I'm sure you've been through a few acquisitions. Um, when that happens, generally, usually they, both of them run separate for quite a while before they start merging the two. And usually a lot of back office stuff is where you start merging versus product lines. Product lines usually are down the road as far as merger, and they have those uh, points. And they usually telegraph that way in advance, saying, hey, we're doing this, doing that, which is you know usually part for the course for mer most uh, mergers. Um, and a as a virtual DJ, DJ like yourself and myself, um, do you think they should have went through Serato, or do you think they should have went through a virtual DJ? Uh, it's hard to say. I mean, you know, if you look at uh, a lot of the um, uh, one, one example I'll, I'll give you is in the past couple of years, uh, you've seen a lot of the DJ software is coming out with uh, with more and more features. And some have had these features all along, you know, like uh, I, I tend to think, uh, you know, just like on my you know, the DJ app, you know, it's free, you know, but that's got some great features in it. You know, it really does. Uh, virtual DJ has always been, I don't know if they've been first to the table with a lot of new features, but they've been pretty quick on the draw with a lot of new features, even though a lot of others, a lot of people don't use a virtual DJ, but they come out with uh, a lot of new features pretty soon and, and others tend to follow. Um, now in, in the past couple of years, we've seen, um, a lot of the, um, uh, what is it? The, 
I'm, I'm drawing a blank on the uh, the, the features where you the stems. I'm so stems. sorry, I had drew a blank there. Yeah, now um, it's stems 2.0. Virtual virtual DJ came out with uh, the DJ app. They were the first to offer stems in real time, and um, if if I'm correct on that, and then Serato came out, and Serato probably did it a little bit better. You know, but Stems 2.0 came out and then, you know, so they're one upping each other. So, you know, th the thing is, if, even if Pioneer buys Serato, I think Serato is still going to be a standalone um, uh, software. Uh, I probably you'll probably see a lot of these um, iterations uh, come closer together to, to the different um, apps. I think that that's how I see it. I think instead of one getting something. And then six months later, somebody, you know, perfects it. I think it's going to be with them o owning uh, Serato now that you'll probably see these uh, these iterations happen across the board simultaneously for a lot of things. So I think I, that's a good thing. I, I, I hope so. You know, again, I also look at competition usually brings more innovation. So I'm hoping that now that because, you know, Rekordbox and Serato – you know, our two separate softwares now they're going to technically right now they're technically one, even though Serato is still separate and stuff like that. And again, years from now, months from now, whatever, they're going to integrate stuff between the two. But that brings back to going kind of going back to kind of two softwares. And I know someone who does use doesn't use Serato, doesn't use virtual DJ or record box. He uses a, his, a software that has been around for a little bit, Torque, and that software. He loves, and that's Matt, DJ Solstice. Um, Matt, uh, I know we talked a little bit about before. I know you're not a Pioneer fan. You like other brands. You feel other brands are a little better. But what, what's your take on this merger of or this acquisition of uh, Serato for Pioneer? What do, you, what do you think of that? I mean, I think it's just a one company buying out their competition. Um, you know, Pioneer couldn't have Serato before, so they made Record Box. Um, and now they're like record box is not a widely used as we were hoping it would be and it didn't catch on so we're just gonna buy our competition instead and implement it across the board um uh, that's kind of what it sounds like to me um if i was serato i would have asked for far more than 100 million um i would have asked for probably half a bill knowing the value uh it brings and it i think if it's a niche market like nobody Nobody that's not a DJ has even ever heard of Serato. Like nobody in the club or non-music business has even heard of Serato, really. So maybe that played a role. But everybody's heard of Pioneer. Maybe not Pioneer DJ, but at one point it was a division of the actual Pioneer company, which makes tons of stuff. You know, they're only a couple steps below Samsung out there. So um, it's, uh, I don't know. I think it'll be interesting. I think it'll help with future renditions of the controllers. So instead of them being able to work with Serato, they're just going to like come with it out of the box, like set up and ready to go, like fully mapped. So like my controller, the one that came like when I bought my first DJ controller, it came with the software and the software was mapped virtually to the actual controller. So where the controls were on the software matched the actual layout of the controller. Uh, so it just it made logical sense when you would, you know, do a knob, the knob that looked like that knob would turn or, it, you know, it's just a. Uh, yeah, so I don't know. The company that made my software is Avid, which used to be M Audio, and uh, Avid now makes only live production. But there's still a dedicated user base of Torque users out there somewhere in the world because uh, all these new controllers, um, a lot of people make uh, maps or guides or temp whatever they call them uh, files to it. So like when I got my controller, somebody had already made a fully mapped for the most part uh set up and i just had to add a couple things so and, um, yeah, i don't that, know it, that is a i feel a crucial thing here is having stuff that's mapped and mappable and i know um there's also uh, you know again unfortunately torque is not in the market anymore and they went on to more professional audio their parent company uh but you do have a couple other smaller ones and um you know, it's like, is that going to gain more traction now? Are those smaller software companies that are out there? There's a couple, there's a couple of them out there uh, that do stuff. And will they gain traction and get more customers coming to them now, now that 
again down well, the road again we're, we're trying to look at a crystal ball and say and guess what's going to happen you know years from now saying oh there's only going to be two we pioneer may say hey we own you guys but you're still totally separate software you guys do your own thing we just have the financial benefits we have no idea we have no idea whatsoever uh we're just guessing um with stuff and what's going to happen how it's going to shape out but you know you have uh dj software out there that you know people use quite a bit and you have to ask you know you know what's going to happen and i know i have a another dj here who uses record box dj brentley you use it almost on a daily basis uh between all the clubs you do in the bars and uh weddings uh you use it quite a bit so what do you think of this? Do you, are you looking forward to it? Are, are you excited about it? Are you like, hey, wait and see? What's your thoughts of everything? I'm definitely kind of wait and see about everything. But the writing has been on the walls for a little bit now with the Flex series. When they release the Flex 10, that's Serato or Record Box now. The only deck made specifically to do both. Now, you can map certain Serato decks to do record box, but you could, for example, and maybe this will change now that you can take an SX2 or an SZ and map it to record box. I don't think Serato is going to become the predominant company for them because of all the investment and time they've spent building up the record box name. And when you really think about it, more often than not, the clubs you go to, like, if I go to Legends here in town, I'm using a 9 with two CDJ 3000s. Uh, if I go up to Icon and Stevens Point, or in Wassa, his other club, I'm using an XDJ, uh, the new one, the 4-channel X, what is the X, I don't even know which XDJ it is, but it's the all-in-one that you can plug your computer into. So, I can't see either company backing away from one another I can see the mutual benefit now of they are no longer creating decks for record box and decks for Pine or for Serato. With the Flex 10, they've shown you can use one deck for every app for each of their apps. So now I think their new focus will probably fall in line with creating better decks for both apps. And maybe at some point one of those apps will be getting taken away, but I can't see it being record box just because of how much actual time investment and a lot of the club standard yeah i see a lot of djs using serato don't get me wrong but more often than not it's the club clubs i'm in you have to be able to use record box and it's like part and parcel why i don't submit to do the show in vegas the, at the big one what is it november or is it i can't remember which one but you have to be a serato dj you can't use anything but and that's Part and parcel I haven't submitted. So hopefully this will bridge the gap between the two apps more and more. And that that's the question again, look for you, yourself as a record box DJ. Uh you can kind of look at stuff, and go, okay, you know, is it uh is it a great software? Is it good software? You love the software, you know software very, very well. Uh with the acquisition of Serato, will that change? Will they fade one in the background and make one more primary. It, there's, again, there's a lot of questions. We have no idea whatsoever. Um, we're, again, we're this is the first day of the information, first day of it dropping, first day of everything. So we have no idea whatsoever uh, what's going to happen, um, you know, for acquisitions or whatever. We have no idea. We, we're just guessing. We're throwing darts at a dartboard and saying, hey, these are questions we have. These are questions that are mine. What is going to happen? What's going to transpire? And again, the other thing is that, you know, again, there's other softwares out there. You know, just I do a quick Google search of trying to see some other softwares that are out there floating around out there. And, you know, Denon has their software um, engine, which, you know, for their uh, units, but also you can use any other software to that. Uh, you know, you're looking at some other our other manufacturers are going to have their own software. Is Ring going to come out with their own software? Is someone else going to come out? Hercules going to come out with their software? Um, you know, I could see one thing with all this. That Pioneer, since they've been proprietary with their software and how it works with decks for Rekordbox, 
I can definitely see them pulling the plug on being able to map anything with virtual DJ, tractor, or anything else. I could totally see that happen. And the thing is, like, tractor, tractor is probably <clears throat> a small percentage of DJs. I still have a, one computer with tractor on it. Uh, I bought many, many, many moons ago. I don't know what tractor is up to. Um, I don't know what it's up to now. Um, tractor uh, Pro 3 is what it says, but I'd it's um full version ninety nine dollars for tractor, uh, uh tractor pro three, so, and tractor uh, I, I don't know if, I I have to look at tractor it's been a long time since I looked at it I don't even know if they do video support or not, but it is again it is interesting uh what what is what and what's going to happen what's going to transpire and again I'm looking forward to the future of it and seeing uh what in the you know innovation is going to happen on software side and hardware side from uh, Alpha Theta. So, Tommy, welcome to the round table. Hey, uh, how's it the going? Table many moons ago when we were on Instagram. Uh, I said, Yeah, back in the some... IG live days. Yeah, and I said I'm going to bring some people back from the uh, past. You're the first one on for to celebrate the one-year anniversary of us going to uh, Twitch and on YouTube. Um, I see also you've grown a beard since going away to college. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's uh, it's a little different from the last time you saw me, probably. Yeah, man, I'm like looking at him, like, oh my god, you're you become <laughs> you're becoming old. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and you know, so I know you, I know you, DJ, I know you, DJ, uh, you're doing a lot more club events, you're doing more parties and stuff like that. Uh, you've done uh, a lot of bars, and stuff like kind of like DJ Brentley. What software do you use when you DJ? What's your what's your uh, software choice? Uh, I'm a Serato user for uh, I would say 95 percent of the time. If I'm not using Serato, I'm using like a USB with uh, like an XDJ controller or, or like CDJs. But that's kind of a rarity. So what do you think of Alpha Theta buying Serato or actually merging with Serato? Or where, we, where will you want to look at acquiring Serato? You want to do the more technical term. What do you think of that? Yeah, I saw that news this morning. Um, from what I saw, like I, I know you, you guys were talking about it. I did see they're going to keep them as like separate like entities or whatever. So... I mean, my hopes personally is that they don't make a lot of changes to either software because uh, Serato, especially, like I've become pretty familiar with it. Um, so, like, I, I hope that they don't, you know, make any major changes or phase it out all like altogether because that would really uh, kind of put me in a tough position. Uh, but I don't know. It's going to be interesting. I could see them potentially like putting more focus on Rekordbox because it is what they started on. So maybe the you know updates for Serato become a little bit less common. Uh, they're not putting as much work into Serato. Um, but like DJ Bretley was saying, they have the FLX series of controllers now where they're using Rekordbox and Serato uh, like capability on there. So I guess if they feel that they can maximize their audience to, to both software users, then uh, they, they may just feel like it's beneficial to just leave them both as they are. And that's the hard part, especially like like I said before with uh, when I was le talking earlier. Uh, we don't know what's going to happen. Uh, again, they're, they're, they're saying they're going to run it separately right now. But as someone who's been in the corporate world, uh, Jeff has been in the corporate world for a long time. Um, and a few other of us have been. Uh, we know acquisitions and acquirements of or corporations when they acquire someone. Um you know, usually integration is usually the back office first, you know, uh, stuff that you as an end user or myself as an end user would never see uh, from Alpha Theta or from uh, Serato. But uh, eventually you start seeing it go on the front line stuff into the products. And, you know, do they want to have two separate companies? And eventually they, you know, put everything together. It's just like um, when um, uh, Newmark's parent company bought uh, Denon from uh, – uh, Denon uh, DJ, 
uh, they were separate. They were doing stuff separate. Then all of a sudden you started seeing new products come out from Denon and they were similar to the new Mark stuff, but much higher quality. They would use, cause again, the price point's different. It's kind of like General Motors. You have your Chevy, you have your, you know, Buick and you have your Cadillac and you want your Cadillac to shine, which is Denon. And you want your Chevy to work good, but not have as many features as your Cadillac. So that's that's the thing is that you know uh, what will Pioneer do? We have no idea. You know uh, Alpha Theta, uh, which again you guys like said before, Alpha Theta is Pioneer USA. Uh, Pioneer USA is its own entity, and uh, Pioneer like it used to be. Like I got Pioneer TV. I still have a Pioneer receiver in my living room. That's all totally separate companies. Um, they they all separated uh, years ago, and Pioneer USA. You know, again, um, they're slowly, I guess, slowly changing over to Alpha Theta because everything says Alpha Theta on their stuff. So I don't know what they're doing. That's, I have no clue whatsoever. You guys know as much as I do, which is not much. Um, But the thing is that- Alpha Beta, Alpha Theta. Yeah, it, they, they love their Roman, uh, their uh, Latin names. and <laughs> name. Roman numerals, dumb name you know? for a company. Yeah, you know what? That's what it's going to be interesting, though. Like you said, uh, with like the, it's going to be interesting, like you said, though, with like when you brought up like General Motors. Like, do you think there will become like a tier of uh, like software? Do you think they'll place, you know, like Record Box will be their premier software, or you got Serato below it? I just find that I feel like it's going to be difficult for them to roll out something like that so soon because like the the industry is so split. Um, and like certain types of DJs seem to use different types of softwares. Like if you're strictly a club DJ, like if you're going to use a USB at a club, you have to use Rekordbox. That's where you analyze everything. Um, but then there's like turntablists and stuff that, from what I've seen, tur like turntablists seem to prefer using Serato. So it's just a, it's just like a, it's interesting. It's going to be real interesting what what pans out. And then you have Jeff and myself. Definitely with. Then you have Jeff and myself who use you know, Virtual DJ, which is a whole separate company, another entity in there. Because, you know, we do video. And again, Tom, you, you DJed with uh, with me before at a wedding. And we used, you know, Virtual DJ. Um, which is, again, there's the software is all kind of similar. They do things a little differently. So you get used for stuff. It's a little different. Um, but, you know, it, it's one of the things that... Um, how all the softwares work, all the different softwares work. They're all similar in a lot of facts and they, they run control the controllers or CDJs and depending on what you want to do. But you get used to certain things. You know where certain buttons are at. You know how to do certain things. Something happens. You know where to go to to change things or, hey, that setting's wrong. I need to fix this. So it, learning another software is a pain in the rear end. <laughs> But just like updates, just like, you know, they all do like, you know, stems and stuff like that. You get to use it and practice with it and get used to it. And then you're, you feel comfortable with it and you can go out in the real world and use it. But, you know, again, I, I, I wish um, both Alpha Theta and uh, everyone else lots of luck. And I look forward to what they're doing. And again, uh, I had said earlier that. Maybe we'll see some new products from uh, for underneath the Serato name or underneath the record box name, and Alpha Theta will release some new, uh, some more new gear because you know uh, I know COVID affected a lot of manufacturers and stuff like that, and you know uh, Pioneer DJ uh, has released a bunch of great new gear, um, and I look forward to everything else that they release. Uh, well, you know DJ Brentley had he had he had a little hiccup with his. Um, but as, as, I said before, as I said before, <laughs> and I teach if you guys make me a cross trainer that doesn't, <laughs> if you guys don't know, unfortunately, DJ Brentley's uh crossfader decided to uh go on vacation during the middle of a, of a gig, and uh, yeah, kind of, uh, he's got sent in for service <laughs> and he's on his he's on his old gear, and it's this is an important thing. For DJs out there, do not, do not, do not, do not sell your old gear. Keep it for a while when you get a new piece because if something happens, you need to have backup and you should always have backup gear. 
you should always have backup gear. And you should always be able to be self-reliant in case something happens that you can grab it and use it like what DJ Brentley had. He w- went through the gig flawlessly, worked fine, and he sent he's, he said has sent a unit in. It's gonna be gone for a while, however long it takes. If it takes a month, it takes a week, whatever, they'll repair it, they'll take care of that. But in the meantime, he has his older gear he still keeps. So make sure you guys keep yep. your old gear. Make sure you keep everything working right. If something needs to be repaired, send it in right away and get it fixed. Make sure you have backup gear. That's always a smart play right there. Even if uh, you go out and buy, I, I put a review on, on YouTube, the uh, the $99 Hercules low controller to have just as a backup to get you through some gigs. You can't do as much with it as you can with a Flex 10 or an XZ or even an SX2, but it, you can plug it in and still do a gig. I've done, t- I do Twitch here. When I DJ on Twitch, I use it. I've used that cocktail. It's a nice little inexpensive controller. At least have something. I have that. Plus I have an SX2. Plus I have CDJs, which Tommy played on. <laughs> so I, I have, you know, and I have my XZ. So I have tons of gear, but it's always good to have those backups. And uh, Tommy, I know that um, with everything going on and you're back here, uh, down here or up here or because uh, you're going to college in um, uh, Fairbanks, down Alaska. Here, yeah. I'm up in Wisconsin for college. Yeah. <laughs> Fairbanks, yeah, Alaska. Sometimes it feels like it. <laughs> and I, I know that uh, you're you're back home for the summer. You're enjoying yourself here. And it's good to have you back down here, especially a fellow White, White Sox fan, you know. Saw you rocking the White Sox shirt. That's right, yeah. A couple of your gigs. I'm like, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, got to. Well, uh, D- Brentley is a Cubs fan. You know, we're not going to fault him for that. You know, <laughs> we still love him. <laughs> still, he, he's still my bro. <laughs> I'll still give my bro a hug. <laughs> so I, I heard, uh, I heard DJ Brentley. I heard you say that you play in uh, in Wausau and in Stevens Point. So are you based yeah. out of Wisconsin? I am now. Yeah, I live in Lacrosse. I moved here. Uh, from Chicago almost eight years ago. Okay. And wasn't my intention to get back in the booth, but uh, what happened was I was the GM of Legends and now Lacrosse Beer House here. And our DJ just didn't show up one night. And the owners were like, it was the middle of the summer. And it was like maybe two weeks after school was out and a week before summer started, for the summer school session started, so half our staff wasn't there. There was no one that go in the booth. The owners were like, guess what? I'm like, I guess I'm the DJ tonight. Uh, but these aren't turntables, and I'm not pushing autoplay. Uh, and so I went to the owner's kit, and I'm like, give me the top 500 songs on this computer right now. Put it in a crate. And I'm like, we're going to go do this. We'll figure it out on the fly. And he's like, left, right, deck, deck. I'm like, cool. And with that, I became their main DJ, and after I left, went on for it for a minute. So, yeah, I'm all over the map in Wisconsin right now. But I will be right back. I have to go get my daughter and her cousins. They're pulling up in front right now. Well, go get go – get, go take care of her. And then uh, Jeff, of course, in uh, beautiful North Carolina, and Matt out in California. We got Tommy here, fellow Chicagoan, and uh, uh, kind of goes across the, the Cheddar Curtain to uh, out to Wisconsin. Uh, you know, we have DJs from all over the place and it's, it's always interesting when we hear about stuff. And the next thing I want to ask you guys, we're going to pose this question here. Um, with summer basically halfway over and I, I know Tommy, you got school and stuff like that. Um, your bookings for 2024, um, are you seeing uh, same amount of bookings? Are you seeing equal amount? Are you seeing less? Are you seeing more? Uh, so, Jeff, I'm going to start with you because I know you do a lot of school events. I know you do a lot of – I know you do some weddings, but you do a lot of special events. Um, are you seeing your fall bookings really good for schools? Are you seeing bookings for 2024 really good? Or how things going for you? Uh, it, it's playing out about the same as it has in the past couple of years. Well – uh, it's post COVID. Um, you know, my weddings are picking up. Um, the, uh, school stuff is, uh, is always, you know, the kind of the, the same stuff every year, the same dances. Um, those, uh, tend to come back every year. 
uh, you know, it's a lot of times it's, um, you know, not that competitive uh, with other DJs. If you are, if your price point is good for the school, then uh, they'll bring you back every year. So, and I'm fine with that, you know, for so especially the local schools, uh, the ones my kids go to, that type of thing. Uh, as far as weddings go, um, yeah, I think I think we hit a plateau. I think you know after COVID, we had that spike uh, where you know a lot of people wanted to get married that couldn't you know during 2020 or early 2021. Uh, so 2022 was crazy. Uh, 23 is um, you know I, I think for 24 it's going to level off at least how I see it, um, but. You know, as far as weddings go, I mean, yeah, I would talk to Solstice. He's the one that's uh, scheduling those you know, left and right and uh, find out, you know, what his is looking like. Well, I, I, I'll, I'll bug Matt. Matt and, I are the, Matt and I do a lot of weddings. And I know Matt does more weddings than I do. He wants to do like 500 weddings. Oh, there's uh, DJ Brentley's assistant. <laughs> uh, I know Matt yeah, does, I'm, I'm does gonna, like uh, a thousand weddings a year so. How's your bookings for 2024, sir? I cry. I, I just uh, I just booked number 75 for this year, um, so that's good. But next year, I think I've got about 15 or so. It's it's definitely a little slower. I I was at like 25 by the end of the year for the next year. So uh, as long as I'm around that, we'll be fine. Um, I'm not worried. We like all the schools that we did homecomings for have already booked us for their uh or all the ones we did proms for have already booked us for uh homecomings and or proms even so uh definitely already have some of those have some corporate stuff locked in uh, um so yeah it's uh I, I mean summer's always a slower season for booking uh in my opinion so uh i'm not concerned but uh i i always have something like the way that i do my um uh, like my CRM, I, I email, I'm usually emailing, but I also have like text records of like the first contact and then I pin it. So I always see like whatever my pin messages in my iPhone are, I know those are the ones that I'm working on. So it's kind of reminders to follow up and it hasn't been empty in I think for the whole year. So right now I'm working on like seven different ones. Uh, so, um, yeah, it's, uh, I, I, all the ones that I have next year though, they're all like, six thousand dollar pack like they're all the premium premium like everything we offer so like people are going big next year at least it seems um nobody's booked like even my regular package everybody's wanting like everything so i guess that's a good thing but it's also like a lot of work to do those packages like the one we did this weekend i mean that was like a three hour setup with the photo booth and everything so it was it was a lot you know um and i i, I enjoy it but i also don't i'd love to just roll in and set up <laughs> but uh i'm not the dj that has a flight case with everything built in uh everything comes out of a case gets set up placed connected it takes a while and that that's the thing like 2024 i'm seeing is uh so far on steady on par i think will be 20, 2023 um it, it's uh very interesting for my part for bookings and it'll, it'll be, it'll be interesting. Again, every year is always a little different ups and downs a little bit. And I think that the demand from pent up from 2020 into 2021 uh, into 2022, into 2023, I think the demand is still there is pretty strong. Um, what I, again, I'm seeing still people booking and stuff like that. The only thing I really seen big difference is between the two is people are, uh, booking a little bit closer to the date. I was getting, you know, a year, year and a quarter out. Now I'm getting like a year to three quarters of a year out uh, for booking. So uh, we have bookings ready for next year. Uh, do I want to get more? Yes. Do I want to uh, have more business? Of course, like everyone else. Uh, DJ Brentley, I was asking how you're shaping up your 2024. And before you answer that, uh, Adrian E said bookings in 2024, it's quietly, quietly simmering. Uh, weddings, quinceaneras, and a few block parties or a few uh, birthday parties. I'm sorry. So he is booking uh, 2024, like I was in 2024. How is your 2024 shaping up? Are you getting any inquiries like you have been, or are you starting to see it go will, more of a normal? It's been a little slower June and July, 
but I'm not, I guess I'm not panicking necessarily. Uh, I want to say last year at this time, when I came into July, I was basically done booking this year for weddings and on my Saturdays. Uh, it wound up getting up to the number of 87 this year, which is more than I really was intending to do. And now looking towards 24, I've got about 10 Saturdays I'm willing to part with for what or willing to book for weddings. And for next year, I was real kind of cautious knowing like when UWL graduation weekend is, when Winona State University graduation is, things like that, Oktoberfest, Halloween. And so I'm next year, I'm backing off the number I'm taking. I won't do more than 60. I say that now and it'll probably go up to 70, knock on wood. But I definitely don't want to. I don't want to sell myself short and kind of wind up hating life when I know I'd have be having much more fun DJing, you know, like the last few set, uh, years of Oktoberfest and lacrosse, I wound up taking weddings for decent tickets and not saying I didn't like it, but I would rather be in the biggest club in the city doing Oktoberfest weekend with 800 screaming kids than being at a wedding. But the financial aspect of it is, if I don't take X number of weddings, I can't do clubs fiscally or responsibly to my daughter and make sure she has everything she needs. Can I support us off of clubs? Definitely. Will I make any headway any further than just getting by? No. And with that, I want to, I've, if I can book 10 more weddings, 10 more Saturdays next year, which does include December, November, January, February, and March, I'll be happy. Like, there's only, I have like one in July, two in August that I'm really freaking out about. I'm like, they're not booked yet. Oh, no, no. what are you going to do? And seeing what dates there, it's like, well, you could be in town at a club because school's in session. It might be more beneficial to do that anyway. And in the same token, I took over running the booking for Legends and Beer House here and doing all their social media pages. So now I've got a little bit more to fall back on in case I don't pick those up. My business partner keeps giving me a hard time going, dude, those are going to book before the end of the year. Don't freak out. And ideally, I'd like to have 10 bookings when we finish this year. I'd at least like to be 10 to 15 bookings into 2025. I'm only two into 25 now. So I, I definitely try to book out as early as I can. I think my pricing has in that conversation in the Driftless DJs group, my pricing is definitely steering people away. And more often than not, with that, are they, and this is definitely a topic for another time, are they my client or a couple that I should be with, or are they not? And, and I'll just stop right there because it's going to get into that pricing combo that everybody loves to talk about. Mm-hmm. God, <laughs> all those Facebook groups are so annoying with that shit. I'm sorry, but God, they're annoying with Oh, yeah. That. Everybody is they are, they're annoyed about that stuff, and the the yeah. thing is that you know I, I will get I don't want to get too heavily in, into that debate. People need to charge what they're worth, but they also have to look at here's a here here's a formula that I think that we should look at. Look at McDonald's. If you go to McDonald's in your hometown. What do they charge for a quarter pounder? What do they charge for a Big Mac? What do they charge for fries? What do they charge for a Coke? You know, a large Coke, a dollar fifty, dollar eighty, dollar. Are they still doing a dollar for a Coke? No, they're yeah. not. <laughs> in, in a small, in a small town, you know, west of you, south of you, east of you, whatever it is, are they charging the same prices? If they're charging the same oh. prices there versus somewhere else. Then you got to look at it and go, okay, fine, great. If McDonald's is charging the same price as a major market or maybe a little bit less, maybe I need to look at what I'm doing and kind of equate that and say, hey, you know, maybe these people are not, I can't say taking advantage of your pricing, but maybe that, you know, if, you, if everyone raises the, the, you know, the price up, everyone makes money because they're, they're, they're the competition is like, hey, you know what, uh, at McDonald's is $8 for a quarter pounder. Or six dollars for a quarter pound, or whatever it is, and I have a quarter pound hamburger here, and I'm charging three dollars. Well, and 
I have a better quality <laughs> product than McDonald's. Why aren't they getting the same price as McDonald's or around there? You know, get closer. And then, again, every business owner needs to do what's best for them. And every business owner needs to do what's best for their their DJ business. I will not tell Jeff he did charge this or Matt that or Brentley to charge this or Tommy or whoever else on here. They're adults. They have their business and they have to make their own decisions for what's best for them. And they have to see what uh, works in their market. But also they should do research and make sure that they're doing well and that I would never say for them to be the lowest price in the market. They should be smartly you should kind of be in the middle or the upper end of it. Uh, you should not be the cheapest DJ in the market unless really you want to do that. If you want to do that, that's entirely up to you. I'm not going to fault anyone for that. If someone wants to charge you know, $300 for a wedding, they feel that's your best price. That's great. Uh, but the thing is that, you know, you could probably rock it out and do a great job. But the thing is that, you know, are you worth more? You got to look at what the time and material is, what your time is worth and what your materials are putting into it. Tommy, you're, you know, you do a little bit of uh, parties. You do a lot of uh, more club gigs, uh, a couple of little uh, parties and weddings here and there. Uh, how are your bookings for 2024? And I know you got school in there, but you do some you do some gigs up at school. Um, are you looking at some fall dates? Are you got some dates for 2024 already set? Do you have people coming at you? Yeah, so my uh like like you said, my booking is a little different, I guess, than everybody else. Cause uh well, first of all, I'm not even here for like six, seven months of the year. Um when I'm up at school, I'm pretty limited to what I can do because I don't have, you know, all my gear or anything up there. Uh, I did do uh, like sorority formals last year. I did some uh, just some random school events that they would book me for if they needed to like DJ or something. And then uh, at the end of the year, I got involved with this group that throws like a big like college that throw big college parties like three times a semester. Um, so they've already spoken with me about next year. So I'm definitely on for that. Uh, I don't know how many times because they do three a semester. Probably not. I probably wouldn't take all three because I feel that it would start to lower the value of the event a little bit uh, with like the pull that I have for my school. Because um, obviously uh, a big like generator for them bring or like when, when they brought me in, like it was a big generator for a bunch of people for my college to go to the event. So if it became too frequently, then it might kind of lose that. Uh, but at the same time, it was also a super cool event. I'm trying to think, looking forward, I don't, I don't know how many like surefire bookings I have right now. I am gonna try to make a transition next year into more of the club and bar scene uh, a little bit more heavily. Like I'll be 21 for the entire summer next year. Um, so as soon as I'm home next year, I'll basically have free reign to go wherever I want uh, and play wherever I want. So that should also help me to be able to make a lot more club connections and bar connections by actually being there and speaking with, you know, management promoters and stuff like that. Make sure, uh, but you, I'm lucky that I've already been able to get a bit of that experience. Make sure you, you, you make sure you talk to DJ Brantley. Cause he's been there, done that. And he may give you some tips and tricks able to talk to people and maybe help you out a little bit, get some more gigs that way too. Uh, don't be afraid to, yeah, again, I'm going to, we're here to help you, man. <laughs> Yeah, I was about to say, DJ Bretley, I'm going to be looking you up on Instagram and finding you on there. <laughs> You'll find me. Look for the, you know, flash, the girls flashing me. It's kind of common lately. His, yeah, his, I, 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 his, it's uh, unreal. I don't get it. His clientele, years old. Is, his clientele is, I, I you know, they're very much 21 plus. It's. You know, it's really adult oriented stuff. So it, it's it's something that uh it is it happens at his Instagram all the time. He keeps it pretty clean. It's not like there's anything, you know, again, <laughs> violating anything. But the thing is that, you know, it's um a little more risque. So when you find it, when you find his logo, which is the Chicago skyline and it has his name on there, uh the pictures on there, there's a lot of uh guys and girls on there. Uh, throwing uh, uh, throwing themselves, having parties. He's got also his pictures on there for weddings he's done. And uh, the other thing also yeah. you notice, this is something that someone uh, called out for in Facebook, and I've noticed it for a long time. In some of his pictures where he's standing, uh, it looks like he's wearing a cape. 
because he's standing in front of his gear and the uh <laughs> and and the <laughs> and the scrim is just is a perfect like looks like he's got a black cape behind him like he's like it does look like a cape. Super it totally looks like a cape. <laughs> so, uh, I'm gonna have to start wearing white now just so I can contrast my scrims. I say get rid I was, of the uh, vest. I was de- I say get rid of the vest. Oh no, 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 no. Oh god, that is the number I, I at first, you know, I really didn't think it was a good great idea but then everyone i've worked with in the past years like i love your vests and i'm like okay cool i'll keep wearing that I, I'm and even this you, weekend i'm just waiting for you to have the little armband it, up and then you're gonna start you're gonna grow a handlebar no. mustache and start serving at the bar and your other no, glasses no. going can no. I, what can i get you sonny oh three fingers of scotch no problem We will. I, I didn't renew my bar li- bartender's license. I could barely grow a mustache. I shaved the goatee. We're going all clean looking again. I even because I got a different pair of glasses to wear at gigs that have a better glare coating. I don't have to wear my hats anymore. It cost me go. a couple hundred bucks for my glasses, but it honest to God makes this world a difference. Even when the lights are flashing everywhere, that I can still kind of see my computer well enough to DJ. Well, there you go. And again, you always look good. Just like Jeff always looks good on his gig logs. He's always looking awesome over there. And Matt, as well as you, Tommy. And again, I get to watch you guys all on social media. And again, if you haven't done so already, make sure you smash the like button. Make sure you follow. Tell another DJ about the channel. And make sure you follow everyone here on social media. Uh, Tommy, you can find him very quickly. DJ APOC, uh, you can find him on everywhere. The Tubes. On the Instas, uh, the book of the face, you can find them everywhere. And do you have TikTok as well? Yeah, Facebook. Uh, you know, I Facebook I have for, a TikTok for like page, mom, but I don't dad, yes, post yes. on there. I've thought about uh, posting like mixes and stuff on there, but I think I might just do it on Instagram Reels because that's uh, that seems to be where most of my following sees me is through Instagram. I'm turning now Twitch. Um, if but I might upload you... like some quick mixes and stuff. If you want to do streaming, do it on Twitch. Do it on this platform mm. because yeah. the fact that you have people follow you on Twitch and you can do it on here. You don't save it. You don't save the video on your Twitch page. You won't get a strike on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube. You get you know copyright infringement strikes. Here I've I've done yeah, it they, for they a couple years right away. I don't save it on 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 Twitch. I play it. Do it do it live and then it's gone. You know, I may be recorded to my computer and that's about yeah. it. But you know, again, if you, mm-hmm. if you're looking at to do stuff, I would definitely would say Twitch right now is the platform to use years from now. Who knows? You know, it could be someone else, you know, it could be John's platform. It could be, yeah, uh, you know, it could be something else. Um, they could, you know, I don't know, but as of right now, Twitch is the best way to go. The one thing I want to leave with you guys real quickly um with the uh the table is that um with one year behind us and stuff like that and i know a couple i know some of you guys are newer some of you guys have been around for a little bit like you know matt's been around for a while tom you've been around for a while uh with the table and stuff like that um again i i, I want to thank everyone who has been at the table in the past as well as uh people who are on here currently as well as hopefully we'll have some people come up in the future that are really cool and if you guys get a chance to, uh, any of you guys here, again, as always, it's a pleasure working with you. And it's always a pleasure. If you guys have any suggestions or anything like that, please, you guys know you can reach out to me. And you out there, if you have comments, critiques, <coughs> criticism, questions, tomfoolery, anything you want to say, you know, put it down in the chat down below on YouTube. Uh, we want to hear what you guys think. We want to Go ahead and go through things, answer questions. Uh, we always try to answer questions on things. Um, and, you know, last week, last episode, really had more comments than questions. No one really asked any questions, which is fine. And I read those comments and I, you know, do, uh, we'll give you guys thumbs up and and answer back stuff and say, hey, you know, we're going to do this. But if you guys have questions, please ask them. We're, that, the table here is, uh, you know, part part of you too because the fact that we want to make sure that we ask answer questions and ask certain questions ourselves because stuff like what happened today with alpha theta buying serato 
we have questions and we're not going to know that for months, even years down the road, what those answers are. And it is what it is. I'm not worried about it. I, I, I'm very, again, I'm very positive about the thought of it. And I'm very positive about the, the future. But you guys out there, uh, again, I appreciate you guys all for tuning in tonight. Thank you guys all for coming in tonight. And if you're watching this on Twitch, make sure you follow the channel. I want to thank everyone here on the panel tonight. I know we're down a couple of DJs right now because, again, it is summertime. People are doing things. But everyone coming in tonight, uh, thank you all for coming in. And I hope you guys all enjoy yourselves. Other than that, again, comments, critiques, criticisms, put it down below. Smash the like button. You know, follow us on YouTube. And, again, hopefully we'll see you guys in another year with more episodes. Again, every week, except for a few holidays. And uh, another year from now will be year two, and we'll uh, have a little uh, go back on that as well. Other than that, see you guys later. Peace. See you later, guys. Thanks.